So uh, where are you in from today? Uh, from up near Woodstock, New Brunswick. And what brings you here? Well, we came to stand up for our freedoms. I'm a pastor of a church, and they're on and off. You don't know who you have in your congregation anymore, and it isn't taking care of any spiritual uh, healing or health in our province. So I'm here for standing up for freedom and mandates. And what have you seen here today? What have you seen here today? Well, what encourages me is seeing other Canadians with their patriotism uh, pulling together and, and saying, we can do this. We don't have to just be, you know, yes people or just going along with what the government says, but we can follow our God-given freedoms. Uh, our God-given freedom. Who has switched parties and so, if you could speak to someone who disagreed but would listen, what would you say? Well, it's hard because it, when somebody is persuaded already, it's hard to change them, you know, when they're feeling in a certain direction. And really, really, the argument part of it, I think we're past that because there's a dividing line coming, and I believe that it's a spiritual blindness that is coming over the people that are saying yes to this stuff that's euthanasia and aborting babies. And I think we got to stop it what, as soon as we can possibly stop it. Do you feel your views are accurately represented by the media? No, no, not at all. You know, somehow, uh, you know, just take Ottawa, for instance. I have a lot of pastor friends up there, and they're just seeing a beautiful thing of a lot of people saying, hey, we want to have our freedom, and, and they're giving their heart to Jesus, and they're, they're just moving ahead up there. And the media just shows that it's a miserable uh, lockdown, or, or people have, have, you know, pulled in convoy, but it's not. There's something beautiful about unity and about people holding, pulling together. How, how have you personally been affected by the mandates? Well, <clears throat> our church, we're just a small rural uh, church outside of Woodstock and, and um, you know, in the small community of Benton. And our church can, uh, you know, some weeks you're allowed to have church, some weeks you're not. And, and it's just not right for that to happen. On the other side of things, we're also outfitters at Paradise Hunting Lodge. And the last two years, we couldn't have spring bear season. And that, that in itself has really affected us, especially the second year in, you know, and we're feeling the financial crunch of that. That was a little bit to, to help subsidize, you know, our income. And we lost that the last two years. So we're looking forward to the mandates being pulled back and people can come through the border again. I'm, a, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I'm a U.S. citizen, and I miss just going to see my family when I can, just because I, did, I chose not to get vaccinated. What do you think is at stake if nothing changes? I'm sorry. What do you think is at stake if we don't change this? If we don't change it? It, it's the vaccine is just the bottom ladder, bottom step on a ladder of what is happening to our society. And it's being overrun by the uh, world economists that are just saying we're going to control and we're going to uh, decide how many people need to be in, how many people need to be voting. And, you know, it, it's it isn't the vaccine. That's the big thing. That's just the beginning. And, and even with this, to say no more mandates, I, I believe that's reaching out there a little far, but we need to, we need to have our freedoms back that we can, we can at least have spring bear season, at least see people visiting our church. Our lo local people always are at church, but people don't come in to visit. So we're looking for that change.